Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're going to look at the second part of the videos examining the minimum wage. So the first video, which you can get to by clicking up there or link in the description, is all about the economic theory behind the minimum wage. So we looked at labor market equilibrium and how the imposition of a minimum wage, a price floor, because the wage can't drop below that level, how that would affect the labor market. And the sort of short story is that more workers will want to supply their labor because wages are higher. Less firms will want labor because wages are higher and unemployment will increase as a result. But something to know about economics here is the fact that not all economists agree on everything or even many things. So that if we said that, oh, you put a minimum wage on or you increase the minimum wage, that's going to increase unemployment. Not all economists will agree with you. Some will disagree with the economic theory in terms of its application to real life. So some economists, yes, agree that an increase in a minimum wage could increase unemployment. Others think it doesn't really have much of an impact and others view it as having different impacts on different groups in the labor market. So what we'll do in this video is we'll have a look at some of those views. So we'll have a look at kind of the level of the minimum wage in Australia and how it works. And then we'll have a look at some different economists perspective on the impact of minimum wages and higher minimum wages on the economy. But we're not trying to come to a conclusion here. We're not trying to say, okay, this is the definitive effect of higher minimum wages. What we're trying to do is we're trying to look at all the different perspectives so we can increase the sort of richness or the detail in our responses and our understanding to show we understand that complexity that is economics. Okay, let's get into it. So if we have a look here that in terms of the national minimum wage, so I'm talking to you in April 2020, so it could be different when you're watching this video, but as of 1 July 2019, the national minimum wage is $19.49 an hour or $740.80 per week. What's important to know is that who this minimum wage applies to. So let's go to um, this Fair Work link here. So if we go here, let me zoom in a bit slightly, so that what we can see here is that all employees working in Australia are entitled to a minimum wage. This is the lowest amount an employee can be paid for the work that they're doing. But what's important to know is that not all employees are actually going to be paid the minimum wage. That if we go here, for most employees, so for most workers, their minimum wage is set by the award or the minimum working conditions that apply to their industry or occupation. So this minimum wage amount, if we go back here, this minimum wage amount applies to workers that don't have a relevant award or instrument that determines their working conditions. So typically for more unskilled workers in the labor market. But what I also want you to think about is that in reality, there are many minimum wages in the economy. There's not just this one wage, because if we look here, that in terms of pay guides, that we can see that there are all of these awards, more awards, car parking award, um, dredging industry, dry cleaning, um, classic arts, um, marine tourism and charter vessels, uh, racing clubs, event award, the timber industry, wine industry. That they will set the minimum wage for those industries. And that could be different from this overall minimum wage. But the important thing to know is that the industry minimum wage cannot be lower than the federal, the legislated minimum wage. So if we go back to this document that no industry can have a minimum wage that is below that level, but they might have a minimum wage that is higher than that level. It just depends on what they've negotiated and agreed on in terms of their award or other industrial instrument. So if we scroll down a little bit further, we can see a couple of ideas about why think about raising the minimum wage? Why even try and do that? So the government might be looking to increase incomes of low income earners, um, therefore increase consumption by increasing their disposable income, the amount they can spend on goods and services in an economy, um, looking at increasing economic growth as a result because consumption, C, that's part of aggregate demand, boosting uh, economic output in an economy. And the other thing to think about is that 
if you raise the minimum wage, then you are boosting the incomes at the bottom of the income distribution. So that could reduce income inequality, depending on what's happening at the top end, right? Because the top end, they're not relying on that minimum wage in terms of their income. So if we shuffle across a bit more, let's start with some of the views, the perspectives from economists on changing the minimum wage. So if you look at this working paper from the Reserve Bank of Australia, and this is here, it says the effect of minimum wage increases on wages, hours worked and job loss. So this is from September 2018. In terms of this um, article, that here, there is no evidence that modest incremental increases in award wages had an adverse effect on hours worked or the job destruction rate, job destruction rate. So the, the jobs being lost in an economy. So that there is no evidence from this particular study that increasing that minimum wage within those awards actually results in people having fewer hours of work or there being less jobs in an economy. But it's important to note a couple of things here. Can you see that these increases are modest? So relatively small, could be afforded by employers and that they are incremental. If it's incremental, it happens little bit by bit. So it's not like the minimum wage is suddenly increased by 50%, that it's a very small increase at a time, which can be managed by employers in an economy. So this article here is saying that there is no evidence that increases, small ongoing increases in minimum wages lead to job losses in an economy. If we think about it from a different perspective, I think this is an interesting one. This is from um, the people at Marginal Revolution University. I'm a big fan of their work. They do some really excellent videos and content trying to simplify economics that they have this post here from uh, July 2004 with does the minimum wage put people out of work? And here um, they're looking at different articles that have been published. I think the important point um, that I've put over here is that here is that the idea here is that um, so let's imagine the government boosts the minimum wage. So low wage workers earn more that Many economists believe that few people will actually lose their jobs. There won't be that rise in unemployment. Indeed, that RBA study backs that up a little bit as well. But that what could happen is that employers cut costs in other areas. So if we look at this article here, that there's this very interesting idea here is that um, God notes that the government can make employer raise nominal money wages. So the amount of money that must be paid, not accounting for inflation. But the government can't stop the employer from turning off the air conditioner. So the government can't stop the employer from trying to cut costs in other areas to make up for the higher wages. So what they're saying here is that, yes, minimum wages could go up, but working conditions could be worse. So that's another view we can have on the minimum wage. A final thing to think about is that just as there's not one minimum wage across the whole economy, and that there isn't just one labor market for everyone, that there are different impacts on different groups of changes in the minimum wage. And what we're looking here is that um, ABC News had a look at this very same article. They did a whole fact check on does the minimum wage increase unemployment. So what the ABC article looked at is there are a couple of studies that show that younger workers suffer if the minimum wage is increased. That there's evidence that even moderate minimum wages, so moderately higher than equilibrium, can increase the rate of youth unemployment. They cite here a 2014 IMF study that found higher minimum wages had an insignificant effect on adult unemployment, right? So this idea here that there isn't just one labor market and one impact. But what they found was the IMF, so it said, IMF said, young workers can be adversely affected. And you can think about it is that if an employer is looking at a young worker, doesn't have a lot of skills, experience, and that they're suddenly more expensive, Maybe the employer looks somewhere else. Maybe they're like, you know what? We'll pay a bit more for an experienced employee and we won't bother with the higher cost for these unskilled, unproven workers. 
we went through a bunch of perspectives in terms of the views of economists about the impact of the minimum wage and increasing the minimum wage. So you can see there's not one view and you don't have to have just one view. You can include that perspective, that variety, so that if a government is trying to boost the income of low-income earners, of unskilled workers typically, that it has good intentions, but that it could have unintended consequences, including higher unemployment, including no change in unemployment, and also including higher unemployment for certain groups in the labor market. So it's a bit of a challenging area, lots of views, lots of perspectives, lots of ideas. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, seeking clarification, put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.